welcome back to my channel. My hair is looking very different today. <laughs> it's basically because, right, it's so greasy, it just stays how how it wants to stay. And I'm just going to prove a point. So this is me with a hair bun then, hairband. And this is me without. I've got a lot of lighting on today because I tried to get home and film before it started to get dark, but then I got home and it was it's fucking already nearly dark. Like the other day basically I done a little thing on um my Instagram asking what you guys would like to see next and a lot of you voted to know a little bit more about basically diabetes um, epilepsy and everything like that. Got my list that's covered in makeup. In my part two video that I done, I basically very briefly described what it is like living with type 1 diabetes and also epilepsy. I'd just like to say as well before I actually start this video, at the start of the year I was undiagnosed with epilepsy but we will get into that later but it's just like... We're going to first start with diabetes. Now a lot or a lot a lot of people only know about type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is not that well known and it is actually much more serious to be honest than type 2 because basically if I don't have my insulin with me I will die. People with type 2 diabetes yes there could be complications where they could potentially die in any situation but they are not stuck with type 2 diabetes for the rest of their life which unfortunately I am. Right guys you're just gonna have to deal with this lighting because I have to look on my phone for these notes. I just wanted to give you basically what the difference between type 1 and type 2 is. So people with type 1 diabetes don't produce insulin you can think of this as not having a key, so like a key to having your insulin. Um, people with type 2 diabetes don't respond to insulin as well as they should and later in the disease often don't make enough insulin and you can think of this as having a broken key. So obviously I have type 1 diabetes, okay, and I will get into a minute how I basically came about getting that. Um, and it's not like a disease, it's not like an STI, it's not like, oh, I just caught it, I just caught, I just caught type 1 diabetes. No, it's a long story. I have type 1 diabetes, which basically means that I cannot produce insulin myself, and that I basically have to physically inject that insulin into my body. I have to basically test my blood sugars um, at least three times a day just so I know how much insulin to give myself because basically if I give myself too much insulin there is a potential I could kill myself. If I give myself too little insulin there is a potential as well that I could die. And people always get type 1 and type 2 mixed up and I really don't know why because at the end of the day all it is is basically type 1 people just don't have a pancreas well i mean i've got one but it's just like floating around in there doing its own thing and like not not really of any use to me basically i'll leave some links back down below a little bit more information between the differences of type 1 and type 2 because i don't want to go in too much depth about it because there's a lot more interest and in other stuff about it than just knowing what it is I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense in my head, guys. For you to understand a little bit more about what it is and how I got it, I'm now going to start you on this story time journey. When I was nine years old, I basically, this is like over, well over ten years ago now, I started to lose a lot of weight. Like, everyone in my family started to call me a lollipop because my head was so big compared to my body, which it still is, but... We're not going to talk about that right now. Noticed, well I didn't notice because I was only nine, but my mum noticed a lot that I was drinking a lot during the night. And obviously 
maybe I was just thirsty, you know, type 1 diabetes isn't that commonly known and for the signs to look out for. So if you ever do notice your child having these signs, just take them to the doctors just to be safe. Um, I drank a lot of water, I lost a lot of weight, I constantly complained of sharp stomach pains and I literally just felt so drained every time I, I ate food. Got to the point where I just didn't want to eat. When living with someone, you don't notice the little things like that. You don't notice if they're losing like weight because you're constantly seeing that person. So my mum didn't notice a dramatic weight loss. So one day we basically went round to my auntie's and she made my favourite spag bowl and I, she put it out in front of me and I pushed it away. I said I need to go lay, lay down, my stomach hurt. I was laying down holding my stomach and even the smell of the food was literally making me feel really ill. I heard her say to my mum, look Zoe, you need to take your daughter to the hospital. I think she might have diabetes. We went to A&E and as you can imagine, Anyone who lives in the UK knows what A&E is like. Like, it is a long wait sometimes, a very long wait. And I was in agony. Like, I literally felt like a little person was like, <laughs> that's me with a knife, by the way. But then we finally got let in and basically the doctor tests, that's the first thing they really do is test your blood sugars just so they know that everything's okay in that area. And straight away, they knew what the sitch was. And the situation was, my blood sugars were 31.8. Now, for anyone who doesn't know about blood sugar ratio, basically, you need to be between, ideally, 5 and 10. And me being in 31 is a long way. I was in and out of consciousness, consciousness at this point because I was so drained, like my body just wasn't producing insulin it wasn't able to keep up and you actually need insulin to do things like exercise and everything like that which is why if my blood sugars are very high i feel very drained and i don't want to do nothing because insulin actually helps a lot more than control your blood sugars so guys after recording all of this i've just realized that i completely forgot to even mention as to why and how i actually physically got type 1 diabetes so when i was younger before i got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes i actually had the flu and what happened was this flu virus actually physically attacked my pancreas nothing else just my pancreas and completely killed it off and the doctors were quite surprised by this they haven't seen this before and they said it was a complete and to accident nothing to do with genetics nothing at all i was just very very unlucky after that i was in hospital for three days now i know you shouldn't take like being in a hospital for granted like three days is a long time but for a nine-year-old and a mother who has no idea about what to do and what kind of guidance they need i do really think that it should have been much longer. After I got admitted, basically, I then learned something else which scared me. The doctor basically said to my mum, I'm so glad that you brought Sophie in when you did because she is on the verge of a diabetic coma. I tried to learn now to live a life where I didn't really understand what I was kind of doing, but like I just knew that I had to inject insulin. I'm now basically gonna show you like basically what my different things look like. Injections and blood test, blood test kit. So here is my blood test kit and basically this is just a little monitor which you ping, put the little prick on which has a little needle inside. You um, prick your finger and then what this does is this draws out blood and you put it onto a little test strip and pop, it will pop up with the blood sugar what my level is which I will be demonstrating now um, and then obviously I have two different types of injections I have Nova Rapid which is basically like a correction of um, if I need a correction if my blood sugars are too high or if I'm going to be eating a lot of carbs and things like that and I also have a nighttime injection which is called Lantus and what this does is this basically helps to steady out my blood sugar throughout the night because obviously I'm going to be asleep in that time my body's not going to be getting any insulin at all 
So it's very important that I've got a background insulin that kind of helps that along its way. I'm just going to be talking about seizures and I'll be talking about um, these more in my next bit about my epilepsy but obviously with diabetes there are chances that you will have a seizure just purely because of your blood sugar levels. Much more likely that I will have a blood sh um, a seizure if my blood sugars are low. So I call them lows and highs. So a low is anything between 4.5 for me is when I start to feel shaky. So when my blood sugars start to get low, it can actually be um, mistaken for like someone being drunk. And I find that really funny because me being drunk and my blood sugars being low is not, it's not the same. I'll begin to sweat when my blood sugars are low and I'll begin to shake and it is really like you're stuck in your own body. It's like say if you haven't had anything to eat all day, by the end of the day you feel run down, you don't want to talk to anyone, you can't get any words out because you're that, you're craving food. So that is basically what it's like for me, but I get serious sweats, I start to sweat so much, um, I can't talk, sometimes I can't even get out of my own bed, so I used to have to call my dad to go and get some food for me in the middle of the night. When I have highs, this technically is anything over like 10, but like recently my blood sugars have been really bad, like in their 20s. And I pray to God, like, please help me. Like, when I get stuff like that, I just feel very sick. I don't swear. I don't show the actions of what will happen when my blood sugars are low. However, it is very unlikely that I will have a seizure due to these. It's more likely that I would go into, like, a diabetic coma just purely because my body needs to shut itself down and repair itself. I'm just going to talk to you guys about stuff that just don't, don't say to people just don't say to people with type 1 diabetes we're not like type 2 diabetes people okay like i'm really sectioning us off like i i'm going to tell you a story so i went to grab a custard donuts around someone's house and when i grabbed this custard donut someone someone said to me should you be eating that with your diabetes and I literally took a bite out of this donut and I said, I can eat what the hell I like as long as I control it with my insulin. I just want you guys to know that I'm a normal person, okay? I can eat anything I like, but like any other human, it has to be, you know, in like ratio to each other. Like if I'm going to have a tub of ice cream, I'm going to have a tub of ice cream. If I want to have a bit of cake, I'm going to have a bit of cake. But then I'm not going to eat that constantly. Do you know what I mean? I just don't produce insulin in my body, so all I have to do is just inject it into myself. That is it. That is literally it. I don't have to have a certain diet. I just have to have a normal, healthy diet like any other person would. Now I'm going to talk about two other things. Obviously, drinking, drinking is completely fine, guys. I get wrecked all the time. Now I'm joking. It's not all the time. It's just occasionally. I can have a drink. It doesn't matter. If I want to drink, I'm going to fucking drink. If I want to have a bottle of wine because I've had a bad day at work, I'm going to have a bottle of wine. It's the same with food, okay, guys? It's just, you know, in ratio to each other. You don't want to have too much because then technically you're an alcoholic. Now we're going to be talking about... Yeah, when I was younger, basically when I left the hospital, they gave me a big, thick booklet about sex. And I was nine years old. Like, I mean okay you know prepare me for the future and all but maybe this should have waited until i was at least 13 because it scared the shit out of me in this book it said to me that i would have to taste my blood sugars every single time before and after i had sex every single time now let me just tell you something guys life doesn't work that way it really doesn't and you know sometimes you're in romantic situations and you don't want to whack out your blood testing thing sorry darling i've just got to bleed quickly if i feel that my blood sugars are low during after i'll just stop and i'll test my blood sugars i'm very glad that i grew up when i did with it because i feel like if i would have got it when i was like 16 or something that would have been a complete another story i feel like because i had to grow up with it through my teenage years it was a lot more easier for me obviously i've got glasses now because your eyes do tend to deteriorate when you do have diabetes 
um, which is why I have to have yearly um, eye tests that do a 3D scan of your eye because the retina can be destroyed and things like that. With the situation I'm in at the minute with my high blood sugar, it really scares me because obviously that can affect me later on in life, it can affect my eyesight, it can affect my life expectancy and things like that. So what I'm going to talk about now is my epilepsy. Now as I said at the start of the video, I haven't got it anymore, but I did live with it from the age of 14. My epilepsy journey was very confusing. I didn't actually know what caused my epilepsy. There's a lot of different things, guys, that cause epilepsy. Moving objects, nothing. You can just have an epileptic seizure for no reason at all. Flashing lights and also pubescent epilepsy, which I think that is correct but I'll go into more detail later. When I was 14, I basically had a seizure. What I just wanna say, guys, is people do have different, there's different types and there's different kinds of seizures. Sometimes seizures don't have to be someone shaking or locking their jaw. Sometimes a seizure can just be this. I'm not kidding you, this can be a seizure. Someone just sitting there and going blank is a type of seizure. When I was 14, I came back from the fair and I basically had a seizure outside my dad's room. Now, I can't remember anything about this. Like, I can't remember having the seizure. I don't remember what it felt like before the seizure. It's like I go into like a blackout. I had all of my seizures when I was asleep. So every time I woke up, I was very disorientated. I didn't really know what was going on quite scary when you wake up and there's like three strange men standing at the end of your bed but actually it's the ambulance so after this basically they done they knew i was diabetic so they automatically thought it was due to my diabetes but when they test my blood sugars they were literally spot on like they were seven point something and they said this is very unusual because we've literally they literally got there straight after i had a seizure so my bloods would either be really high or really low and they weren't near none of that. I had to then have loads of tests at Norfolk and Norwich, um, and basically they put like loads of this luby stuff on my head. Basically what this did, it they put all these like little things, like I can't remember what they are, they have wires. From this, they flashed, they, they literally flash lights in your eyes. My mum and dad were like, well, hold on a minute, isn't this going to cause a seizure? And they were like, well, it could do, but, you know, we've got to find out what it is. So, literally, for that whole night, I was shitting myself, thinking, am I going to have another seizure? But I didn't. They came back and said, yeah, I've got epilepsy, definitely. Um, they knew it ran in my family on my dad's side, in only the females, so they thought this is where it's come from. So I thought, great literally cut my dreams away of being able to drive when I was 17 I thought that is it like I'm not going to be able to drive now um but I am allowed to drive now because basically you're allowed to depending on what type of epilepsy you have depending on how serious it is um you have to wait a certain amount of years before you're even allowed to get into a car and drive so luckily mine was a year or two years seizure free when i went to the meeting to basically find out what my seizures were caused by they literally said we don't know we don't know it's not it's not the best because i literally when i got in a car i was scared like to look out the windows just in case the white lines caused a seizure or anything like that it wasn't handled the best I wish I had more information because I wasn't allowed to go to the fair because my mum was petrified I'd walk past the ride and have a seizure but we after a while learned that my seizures were mostly well were always when I was asleep. I've had so many different weird experiences with seizures and how I've woken up but I've not actually been aware of my surroundings. There was this one time I walked downstairs in my mum's house she said morning to me and I just went mm walked past and my eyes were fucking open they were open okay and i went to the toilet and i was having a piss and i fell off the toilet having a seizure do i remember any of this do i fuck i don't remember fucking anything guys N nothing but literally i have done so much during them periods of times so i had my 18th birthday i went out to clubs 
Um, I've been to Ibiza in this time. I want to say, obviously, I don't advise people with epilepsy to go out and do these things, but like, if I had more knowledge, I wouldn't have been so scared to do all these things because in reality, my seizures weren't actually caused by anything other than hormones. Basically, the start of this year, they undiagnosed me because I said I've not had seizures for like nearly three years. So basically I wanted to know if I could just get it removed because obviously when I have my insurance on my car, it's not technically the diabetes that pushes the insurance up, it's the epilepsy because they see it as I can have epilepsy, epileptic bits at the wheel which will then obviously potentially kill me and other people around me. He basically told me that there is another type of epilepsy, okay? And this epilepsy is brought on by my puberty, which makes a lot of sense because I was a late developer. I didn't really get boobs until it's very common that teenagers between the ages of 13 to 18 experience seizures which are a category of epilepsy. I was just so relieved that I finally knew after all these years what had caused my epilepsy and now I didn't have to take any more epilepsy medicine. I didn't have to worry about, you know, letting people know I had epilepsy. I'm just going to talk about the after effects. So how I experience life after a seizure. And it really is an experience, guys. So basically, I'm very moody. I do not want to talk. My throat feels like it's been scraped with, like, sandpaper. And, like, it is horrible. I can't eat nothing. I don't know why. During my seizures as well, I do tend to twist my arms like this. And I do actually tend to lock my jaw, which unfortunately sometimes gets my tongue caught in my jaw which I do have indents on my tongue from obviously biting my jaw but I don't ever feel the pain of that like I've had times where I've had blood dried around my mouth because obviously I bit my tongue but luckily I don't actually feel the pain of that I think it's just because I'm in shock from what's happened very outspoken I feel like I'm the only person that matters in the world because it literally drains you so much that you can't do anything for yourself. You need you need to be looked after so bad. Your muscles ache from where they've all tensed up. I literally will sleep as long as I possibly can because there is literally no way to recover other than sleep, guys. And I can't have the lights on. Don't turn the light on after someone does a seizure because it is the worst fucking thing. Having a bright light shined in your face when your eyes are straining, it really, it's not fun. The doctor's literally walked into the room and the light's been off. I'm asleep. And then it's just like, Sophie. And I'm like, are you fucking, are you kidding me? Never like, like, weed myself lost control of my bowels i know some people do experience that when they have seizures which i cannot imagine like that must be awful to wake up and you see like what's been happening around you whilst you've been having a seizure but obviously if i did guys i'd let you know because I'm telling you about epilepsy, but I just wanted to say that I've never experienced that. Everything that I've talked about in these, this video, you can live a normal life. Like, I do everything that a 21-year-old would do, and thank God that I'm now undiagnosed with epilepsy because it's given me a little less to worry about now. If I've missed anything out that I remember throughout this video, I'm just going to link it like down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe guys and I'll be back next Sunday with another video. Bye.